Hello, Tim Wilmot here, and welcome to my watercolour demo. This time, another painting based on a photo sent in by one of my subscribers. Now, if you do want to send me a photo for uh, to be used as a subject for a future painting, uh, more on that uh, towards the end of the demo. Uh, but this one, uh, this scene is a very pretty village in Burgundy, France. Uh, Drouy les Belles Fontaines, and it was sent in by Christian from Munich, Germany. Um, I'm reliably informed by Christian that this is his own photo, so um, hopefully I'm totally on the uh, the right side of the law um, as regards any copyright. But um, when Christian sent me this photo, I thought it made a very nice subject for a watercolour painting because it's got lots of tonal values, differences in light and shade. Um, for example, we've got the shadow in the foreground, quite a lot of light coming across the middle ground. Um, lots of opportunities for different focal points. There is this quite dominant um, tall building in the middle, which I think is the local post office in the village and uh, there's some cars around there's that nice lamp on the wall um, hanging off the side of the wall there um, the light hitting the side buildings on the right hand side a few signs on the right hand side so when I look at this I think about what can I change what can I remove to make it simpler but certainly I'm going to be adding in a couple of figures. Those cars um, there where we're looking at them sideways on don't do they don't do too much for me. Um, I prefer things like that van on the right hand side with the uh, with the back facing us. Um, so I think we'll have a, a car in there on the right hand side. But yes, certainly introduce a couple of figures and try and simplify the scene try and look at the tonal values. Um, the sky, there's, it's, a, it's a nice sky for a photograph, um, but we'll see what we can do as regards mimicking this, um, having some kind of a, a cloudy sky with a few, a few blue patches of, um, of sky in between the clouds. So let's get started then. Now the paper I'm using for this demo is Saunders Waterford. It's cold pressed paper, um, otherwise known as NOT, N-O-T. It's the sort of medium texture and this is 15 inches by 11 inches in dimension. I've taped it down with some masking tape just to secure it, stop it buckling and moving around. And of course, first of all, starting with the outline sketch, which I'm doing with a, a soft pencil, a 3B pencil. Um, popped in there the scene, Christian's photograph in the top right corner there, just so you can keep an eye on that. So we're starting with the um, the left hand side, get in that dominant left hand border of the of the building and the outline of the lamp and then getting in this um, narrow tall building, the post office in the middle. And it's quite nice that it's it's bordered either side by some dark trees in the background behind it. So it uh, again, that's that's a nice sort of uh, tonal tonal difference um, which works well in watercolour. So let's get in the base of those that background there up against the post office. And now thinking about the figures, starting with using as a reference point where are, where what's the top of their where where are the tops of their heads? That's where I start. And using some reference point, um, the height of a window, the height of a car, the height of a doorway, a sign, um, thinking about where that figure's head might be and then, and then 
a second figure um, in a similar position, slightly different pose, um, similar size. So we have them either coming in or going out of the shadows. Then I popped in that vehicle on the right hand side just to balance the two figures on the left. So car on the right, figures on the left. Um, just a few details now of the buildings on the right hand side and this main one on the right with a chimney, quite a nice reddish brown roof and then the side of the building, building facing us is in the shade um, but, but creates a little bit of contrast with some of these signs. There's a nice stop sign here like a hexagonal stop sign um, then a sign I think to the local hotel uh, let's continue on down with a, a few posts the bottom of the building down to street level something going on the right hand side we don't want to concentrate too much on any objects on the right hand side try and keep that fairly vague just strengthen up some of these main lines here just to assist me when I start to paint. Um, now on the left hand side as on the right there's lots of um, windows, shutters, um, little bits and pieces on the building um, which we don't want to concentrate too much on but just give a flavor of it and some of the moldings on the wall as well the different areas of dark and light where these where these moldings are sort of framing parts of that um, that building there so I think I'm about done on the sketch so first step in painting is getting in the initial background wash and we'll start with the sky first of all so I'm using a fairly big mop brush it's a Raphael brush which I find um, it's a synthetic brush I find it gives a nice um, water retention and a nice edge to it and a nice point as well very um, a very adaptable very flexible um, brush for all sorts of different painting situations so just wetted the sky in a random areas and then again with a bit of in a random way added in some clouds just lifted off some something dirty from from uh, the previous painting off the palette there and then interspersing that with a bit of um, blue sky which is mainly cerulean blue using the side of the brush they're just dabbing in and it's blending in where the pa paint uh, where the paper was uh, was uh, was damp and then as I come down towards the horizon making it a little bit weaker so have to have to work fairly fast with the sky and once it's done just leave it alone now starting with getting in the base color of some of these buildings um, quite I mean the, the actual post office is quite light in color building on the left hand side um, in in the shade obviously a good bit darker lots of different colors I can see in there burnt sienna blues browns creams so we're just we're, we're just getting in the base color here now this middle middle post office building bit tricky this one to get that weathered creamy look which is so typical of many uh, French village uh, buildings 
this sort of weathered creamy look so let's see how we get on with this just giving an indication of the the pointy the pointy bit of the top which I'll I'll go over again this is just uh, the undercoat the first the first layer so picked up a bit of cerulean blue there it can make quite a nice grey with in combination with burnt sienna now the road road is quite a bit warmer so I've I'm using a bit of aloes and crimson here just to warm things up a little bit and then paint around carefully around the car which will be in the sunlight so we'll have that as a as a focus um, with a slightly darker background now the buildings on the right hand side the bit that's in the light predominantly yellow ochre but I'm mixing the consistency a lot to again not make it too flat and um, all one all one value so just dabbing with the brush there to uh, to have different intensities of that color and then as we come down again that sort of Alice and crimson that warm look and then what I'm doing now this this area bottom left will be mainly in the shade so it's just it's going to be covered over later on let's go a bit darker in the left hand corner that's going to be a darker spot there top left bottom left I think of the darker areas and that's what I try to think of as well when just before starting a painting thinking about what is the darkest area what is the lightest area so I think think in this example it's going to be top left and bottom left Yeah, let's add in a lot more dark in the top left. So that is it. Let everything dry now. I'm going to speed things up a bit by fast forwarding after I've got my hair dryer out. things will go a little bit lighter there we are so this is fast forwarded I've um, used the hairdryer just to speed things up a bit and now we're going in with the second stage of the painting um, the darks we'll add in a bit more form on the uh, the post office and the buildings now I'm using a slightly smaller mop brush now it's a size it's a size 4 Raphael brush so it's a sort of medium mop brush but it's still got the same quality as the bigger brush good you can get a nice straight edge good point with it good water retention let's first of all now I'm holding the brush near the pointy bit just to get a bit more of a precise um, triangle for the top of that building and then we need to get in the two little spires left and right so side of the brush just very quickly paint those in does look a little bit too dark there but that will that should dry lighter
and then we've got a few horizontal lines a few architectural details just um, marking the the difference in the floors of the building and then just give an indication of a couple of windows on each level they do look sort of quite brown in color and they're not I'm not making them a strict rectangle I'm just indicating a loose style of window and hopefully no two windows are alike so they're all a little bit different in some small way and there's a sort of sign on the front there maybe a little bit too big but that's that's fine good now um, next we need to do the background tree so I'm making up my own green a little bit of ultramarine blue and yellow oh, I should point out my palette by the way um, from the top we've got neutral tint then burnt umber burnt sienna yellow ochre a viridian green not often used a cobalt green a cerulean blue down towards the middle there cobalt blue um, ultramarine blue allerton crimson cadmium red light red cadmium orange and a lemon yellow so i'm using that lemon yellow with the with a blue to make these background trees and adding in a bit of ultramarine blue where I want it to be darker and I've gone right up to the edge of the left hand building using this brush to say it's got a very good nice sharp edge to it paint around these figures which may haven't decided yet whether they're going to be light figures or dark figures but just in case I'll paint paint around them anyway up to the side of the post office get a bit darker on the left hand side gives us a nice difference in values a few horizontals maybe some shadows long shadows being casted across there from a, a post or something like that now the opposite side using that straight edge adjust the angle of the brush a bit flatter to get more of a random foliage effect down to the street level now the the far buildings you can't really make them out exactly what they are and where they're facing so I'm just going to just going to really give the impression of those background buildings and what's helping me is the angle that angle there and the the background trees hitting that so we're just indicate just a few details of these um, of those buildings some shadows going across the street up to the car and then they'll continue on the other side let's just get in just a few little verticals there um, on the building and there's a bit of as, as the buildings are coming towards the side of the building here which is a little bit darker but causes a nice creates a nice bit of contrast up against the more brightly lit building on the right get up um, maybe a little bit more 
tiny bit darker at the base. And then the top of that building, there's all sorts of different shapes going on. So I just want to create the impression of that. And then the left hand side of the roof. Forgot the chimney. Let's get that in while I'm well, I've got this brush. I'll try and make that roof a bit darker. That chimney is a bit lighter than the, the roof. And there will be some more details going into that chimney later on when everything's dry. Just a few lines just to make it a bit more convincing. Now this excuse my hand, this left hand side, starting with a nice edge as best I can, nice straight, straightish edge of the left hand building coming down. Now, as I said before, there's lots of different colors going on there. Browns, blues, creams. So that's what I want to try and do as I'm painting this in. I'll, I'll keep adding in different colors as I'm going down. There's a bit of molding, some sort of vertical molding coming down towards the edge of the building. So just left, left a bit of a gap there. And we get darker, again, darker into the top left corner. And then a, this is where perspective you need to get perspective right on this which I try to do with initial drawing um, getting in these these verticals in a convincing way so let's now come down to the lower level and continuing on over to the side and we're almost joining up with the the background foliage there's very similar values do you see it's um if this was black and white they'd probably be almost identical in value now I'm going to treat the the masonry around these windows in a very loose way, a bit of dry brush strokes as well. Um, it looks a little bit of a mess right now, but it should be, it should get better once I add in a bit more details of the windows and the shutters. So darker as we come down to street level, as we join, as we create the shadow going across the road and a bit like the sky we've only got one shot at this and the shadow is going to be more intense near the building um, it's quite dark that but it should dry lighter so quite quite intense near the building but as it goes over to the right it's going to become weaker and softer Just left a few little areas there unpainted, which will be the edge of the pavement. So over to the right hand side, following those lines I made. 
maybe a bit of a shadow there from the figures. bit of perspective on the shadows as well. Just helps lead the eye into the composition as well. That diagonal of the shadow. Now figures. So I'm gonna, gonna make these darker. Um, but the sun, the light is coming from the left hand side. So we'll leave a little bit of a a light edge on the left hand side just where some light might be hitting them so I started with the head then the torso legs join the foreground shadow paint into it couple of arms just an indication of arms and the figures at a slight angle so it gives it a bit of a sense of movement and then the second figure slightly different pose different angles but we'll keep it a similar tone to the first figure arms legs maybe uh, that, but the torso needs to come down a little bit more make the legs a bit thicker And then when I've got that darker paint, I just dabbed a, dabbed a bit more into the shadows just to make them a little bit more interesting. Now this roof is darker than I first painted it, but I'm using almost a dry brush here so I've, I've got a few little gaps showing through maybe where the sunlight's hitting it so that I'll, I'll probably add in a few horizontal lines for the tiles later on um, let's just get this figure I'm just adding in some clear water there just to let it drip down into the shadows. This board's pretty flat, so there's not too much gradient on it. Now, I'm messing things up a bit here with a bit of splattering. Might need a bit more in a minute, but um, it was beginning to look a little bit too neat. Right, shadow on the right hand side quite dark at the top paint around this sign that's pointing to the right another thing I could have done with that sign is had it pointing into the left just to help with the composition but true to the photo let's uh, I've, I've kept it pointing to the right paint around the hexagonal stop sign leaving a few gaps just where there might be some bits of stonework protruding out catching the light and then as I come down to the base of the building street level there's a few more lighter areas there's a sort of square sign there towards the bottom and then just a few random lines and with those with the angle of those lines just helping with the perspective and again leading your eye from the right hand side leading your eye into the painting now with quite a weak wash now I'm adding in a few details of windows not too dark it needs to be kept fairly light because the light there's bright light hitting this or bouncing off the the road so keep it fairly light and then the windscreen of the car 
which I've used a bit of blue there and then a similar value for the front of the car leaving the bonnet unpainted just adding a thin bit of shade on the right hand side and then the base of the car needs to be quite dark and the shadow underneath so the left hand tire maybe a little bit of light showing underneath the car and then continue on that shadow to the right now while I've still got this this shadow I'm going to add in a few more horizontal lines connecting the figures there is the um, a sweep of the pavement going around um, behind where these figures are I've not bothered with those cars they weren't it might be a little bit too confusing having the cars behind those figures for this particular size of painting just use my fingers there just to lift off some of the paint while it was still damp now with a synthetic brush I'm still splattering a bit the wash is still damp and just give us more of a some extra interest another another dimension another sort of watercolor technique you can use in moderation um, at the right time at the right uh, time of drying while while the wash is still is still uh, damp Not, don't do it too when it's too moist otherwise you won't get these um, these these interesting shapes forming so I've got to let everything dry again and we'll fast forward that so it's all gone a little bit lighter when it's dried and the paper does uh, I've got it taped secured at the sides the paper does buckle a bit which doesn't really matter um, but when you when it's dried it, it goes perfectly flat again so using a small synthetic brush get in the going to get in more detail now starting with this red stop sign so carefully do this get the angles right but not too precise and And then some building details, windows, rooftops, gutters, dra down pipes, drain, drain pipes, um, doorways. There is a, a side window on this building which I'll get in. Let's get the rooftop in there that nice angle maybe a bit of light hitting it as well so I've left a little bit unpainted continue on get that a little little side window in and like like the windows of the post office not a true rectangle just um, a very brief impre impression of a window right left hand edge of this right hand building and I 
underneath the edge of the roof. And then that chimney, just a few lines to help it make it look like a chimney. And now a few lines to give us the tiles on the roof. Not all of them. Leave some gaps here and there. A few dabs just to give it more of a, an aged an aged look. There is a bit of a dark edge on the right hand side there. Some downpipes, posts. Bit of a board around things as well. Those things, those objects that were protruding out from the wall. So while I've got this brush, I'm just picking out a few more details now. More, more definition to those windows, bit of a doorway in here. There are a few little faint lines coming out from the base of the building. And then we've got the pavement on the right hand side. Back to the post office. I'll add in just a little bit of a dark corner to some of these windows. So just adding in a few marks in a fairly random way as I'm going around the painting, just enhancing some areas, adding in a bit more detail in others. I need to be thinking about also the this left hand building. So starting with that lamp protruding out, the support for it, the top of it, excuse my hand. There we are. So a fairly dry brush stroke now. Let's get in a few windows on the left hand building, quite dark. And add in a bit of shadow underneath that molding. more details of the gaps between the bricks and coming down to the first floor the, the uh, ground level windows basically just a bigger version of what I've done already um, not not true rectangles they, they've got they've got to be kept fairly 
simple, not too much detail on the left hand side. We don't want the viewer's attention to be wrapped up and bogged down on that left hand side. We want, I mean, the focal point is, is maybe the, the building, the figures, the car, the stop sign. It's quite a nice shutter though on, on this, at this ground level. So I'm going to get in a few little marks just to indicate that. So we've got the pavement and then a few lines, tire marks or whatever. Just helping with the perspective. So the shutter, some of the um, horizontal vents, the slats, just adjusting the angle to help with the perspective. few more dirty marks along the street, street level. Front, front grill of the car. Need to do some lettering on this road sign as well. And I'm not actually going to put in the letters, of course, too small, but just an impression of some letters, some words. There's two lines of wording here. I think it's a signpost to the local hotel. And then the line below that. Anything really? Gobbledygook couple of words there. Perhaps a bit of a line underneath the sign. And the point. Um, no, there isn't, it isn't being supported like this in reality, but I think it just needs another vertical line there just to help it. So there's not a lot more I can do now, except for now a bit of white paint. I need to get in the, I certainly need to get in the stop sign um, and a bit of white maybe for the lamp, the, the uh, the light of the lamp.
So I'm going to use white paint just out the tube and a very small brush. So I'll just add in more of a defined edge to that hexagonal stop sign there. And then in one go, let's put in stop. And a few little dabs around there. Um, do need to add just a tiny bit on these figures, not too much, because they are sort of in the shade coming out of the, the, sh the shadows. So um, it's not as if the, the sunlight is not as if we're painting against the light, um, but just to enhance it just a little bit on that left hand side. And yes, on this lamp just to enhance that just a little bit more as well. So I think we're nearly done. What I'll do now is um, crop this, take a photo, crop this and just uh, run through a little summary of what we've done. So Thanks again to Christian for sending in that lovely photograph of uh, Drie les Belles Fontaines in Burgundy, France. Made a nice subject for watercolour. I have cropped it here for a widescreen, so I'm missing that top edge, the top border and the bottom, the bottom border. So I've just uh, cropped it for a widescreen 16 by 9 um, uh, dimensions. Yes, so nice subject for watercolour, difference of values, lots of interest. Um, quite easy from a composition point of view. I mean, Christine had done all the hard work with the photograph. I didn't have to change much really, but I did add in those figures more of a dominant car, dispensed with those cars that were in that were parked on the roadside there with the side elevation that for me that didn't really do very much, much better just to simplify the scene and have the car coming towards us and then those just simplify the signs on the right hand side as well, reduced to two or three, um, white sign and the stop sign. And We've covered a few watercolour techniques, um, doing the initial wash, um, different ways of holding the brush as well, concentrating on values, different consistencies and thickness of, of paint as well, um, timing, making sure the paint is dry before going on to certain stages or while it's still wet, while it's still damp, adding more paint to it, using a bit of splattering as well, just to add a bit of interest. And the final stage was with a smaller brush, adding in more of the details, and it started to come together then in that way. So thanks very much again, Christian, for sending in that photo. Hope you liked the picture. Now, like Kristen, if you do want to send me a photo for uh, a future potential painting uh, for consideration, uh, I'd very much welcome that. And uh, But just a few guidelines, please, just so that I'm not treading on anyone's toes. Um, first of all, of course, you've got to be the owner of the, the photo. You took the photo, you own the photo you haven't sold it to someone else, you, you have the title to, to that photo. Um, I do need the photo location, that's very good to reference that in the, uh, the commentary, um, just to uh, 
just to inform people of the location. Um, and oh yes, you please, you need to be a subscriber. So please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Um, and then email it to me, email the image to me. My email address is timothywilmot at gmail.com. My website, if you want to see um, other images of a gallery of, of paintings I've done over the years, then go to timwilmot.com and you'll see information up there on the workshops and demos I do. I can uh, I also do commissions. Um, if you would like a one-to-one -one workshop, I can do that online with you as well. You don't need to come to me. I don't need to go to you. We can do it online. All you need is a webcam um, and a microphone and the time, and then we can do a one-to-one -one session together. But um, please email me for details of that. But you will see some information up on my website, timwilmot.com, on those workshops and, and also painting holidays as well that I get involved in from time to time. So thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Look forward to catching up with you on the next demo. Um, not sure what it'll be right now. Looking forward to getting your photos. Thanks very much indeed. Bye-bye.